<laughs> okay, good evening, uh, Rocco, and thank you so much for agreeing for the to uh, have this uh, little talk about uh, this really exciting uh, initiative that uh, you set up for the Space Pride. Yeah, it's um, great to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I uh, will, will start this interview with a very small uh, question on uh, what uh, your background is and uh, what inspired you to uh, pursue a career in STEM. So I think, uh, as many of us do uh, in the space sector, I have a bit of a roundabout background. Uh, so I'm originally from South Africa. Um, and when I did a bachelor's uh, at uh, the University of Cape Town, uh, which was which is the best uh, university in Africa. Um, I did about six months, and then I really, truly realized my passion for space. Um, and but I didn't really feel kind of at home where I was. Um, so I decided to le actually leave uh, South Africa in the pursuit of you know more welcoming environment um, and uh, better opportunities. Uh, so I actually, after that, I studied um, a bachelor's in theoretical physics um, at the University of Leeds. Um, and that was actually in large part because I didn't realize that I could enter the space sector uh, from other avenues. Uh, so I, I actually thought I could only enter the space sector through astrophysics, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but as I learned more, I kind of got exposed to different uh, topics and different areas in my undergrad. Um, I actually did an undergraduate project in robotics and I really fell in love with it. Um, and I realized I could actually go into space robotics and it could actually be a serious thing. It's quite a niche topic uh, to do. So that's actually why I did uh, after that a master's in robotics at the University of Bristol. Um, and now I'm doing a PhD at the Bristol Robotics Lab, uh, which really is kind of like a dream come true. Um, I'm like the lab is absolutely amazing. It's got like 400 plus researchers that most cool stuff you'll ever see. Um, and for my PhD, I'm looking at uh, how to detect life in caves uh, using swarms of robots. Um, so in future space missions, caves are going to be very important um, because they give uh, radiation shielding. Um, so uh, really, it will be quite an important topic, especially because uh, life uh, has the best possible chance of surviving in a cave so uh, it's going to be very interesting in the future um and as for my motivation behind uh, sort of pursuing a, a career in stem i think you know i was always kind of intrinsically curious for how things work um but it was really space that drew me in because I, I realized uh, how beautiful the universe is around us and how little we truly know about it um and also we can use space to help people in us, which I think is amazing. <laughs> the, the fact is that earthbound perspectives are always very important, especially if you're looking that far um, into the future. It's a really cool, uh, really cool um, research uh, that you're doing uh, for sure. Yeah, thank um, you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and yeah, I could only agree with you on uh, you know like this. Uh, I sense of universalism uh, in the space sector that uh, really brings the space professionals together. Um, it's really, I think, helpful also when you're working on diversity and inclusion issues. Um, so let's jump right into uh, the project that you set up. Um, so the Space Pride, right? Um, yes. Organizing. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Please introduce the project. Uh, so I'm the founder and president of Space Pride, um, and it's a non-profit uh, dedicated to bringing together the LGBTQ plus community in the international space sector. Um, and really what kind of motivated me to start it is in the space sector, uh, we're working on cutting edge technology. Uh, we're so far advanced yet. There's been very little progress that's been made in terms of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, and particularly for the queer community, uh, which lack uh, proper re representation, particularly with astronauts. Um, they lack a voice and they face discrimination. Um, and so no one is kind of really talking about it, uh, and that's kind of the problem. <laughs> and so at Space Pride, 
we hope to try and tackle that problem, but also to act as that community center that I really felt was missing. Um, and it was quite actually a beautiful thing for me um, because by starting this initiative, I actually created a safe space for me to explore my own identity. Um, so that's actually where I, when I realized I was both uh, bisexual and non-binary. Um, and by starting this initiative, it kind of helped me realize uh, who I was as a person, which I think I hope to do uh, for other people uh, through Space Pride. I think it really is a very um, promising uh, project and uh, it's kind of a, a new kind of thing, right? Like uh, when you say that uh, it's these topics are not really addressed uh, extensively in the industry and it's kind of like a secret thing. And then they yeah. went back to, you know, like um, astronaut selection. Um, we, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. They, there's very few sort of publicly out astronauts. Um, so, I mean, it, it just goes to show you how big of a problem it actually is. And, and the, only, the one that was into space that, that got recently uh, outed by uh, her uh, former um, girlfriend uh, was did not uh, come out uh, yeah, by her brain or yeah. right? so, And it was yeah. 2018, so it's definitely a lot of progress uh, to be made on this front. Oh, yeah. So thank you so much for putting this together. I think you're, you're very inspiring also for a lot of people who may be uh, struggling also to find the, you know, the right um, safe space to, you know, explore these identity, identity topics uh, by themselves. Um, so how do you picture then in your ambitions for the, the project? Uh, is that a one-off thing? Is that a yearly thing now to expect uh, at every ISC or like what do you, what do you have well, in mind? Well, there's... There's a few different uh, sort of ambitions that I have. Well, three main focuses, really, uh, which is research, education, and community. Um, so as you, of course, know, Martin, uh, we've established a LGBTQIA plus research group um, with the Space Generation Advisory Council and the International Astronomical Union, hoping to actually document for the first time the queer experience in the international space sector and hopefully we can find some actionable data which we can use to reduce the discrimination that queer people face uh, in the international space sector. And so that's one of the really important things. Another thing is the education and the outreach. Um, so for that, we actually have, um, now this is a bit of a teaser, I can't give you the full details, <laughs> but there is a digital space pride letter and artwork uh, which will be on a mission to the moon next year. Um, and really by doing that, we kind of hope to share our message of hope uh, and radical acceptance. Um, since now is really the first time in history where we can go into space as one people uh, with the queer community being a beautiful part of that. Uh, but stay tuned for details on that, I <laughs> think, because I can't say too, too much. Um, but the, the final thing and the one thing which I, I'm very excited about is the Space Pride, Space Pride Fashion Gala, uh, which will be at the International Astronautical Congress next year, uh, the largest space conference in the world, in Milan, uh, which is absolutely perfect because it's the fashion center um, of the world. Um, and the, the vision behind this is to really celebrate diversity uh, and our beautiful queer community uh, through art and culture. Uh, so it will be a fashion show with the theme of Pride Parade meets space. And it will build on kind of like the latest advances in fashion, so techno fabrics and that sort of thing. And we actually are co-sponsored by the International Astronautical Federation's Cultural Committee, which run the conference. Um, we're supported by Pride in STEM, and Cosmica, and the competitive part of the full, like the competitive part of the event, uh, we have two amazing uh, judges, uh, Nelly Ben Hayun and Anik Barot, uh, on our prestigious panel of judges. Um, and really, it, it, we're right at the start of this, so very exciting. And we are very much looking for partners, sponsors, more judges. So. <laughs> Please get in touch with myself for Space Pride if you would like to contribute. 
um and it's very interesting for sure like uh all this like exciting project all at once uh it's gonna be definitely make a lot of noise so uh <laughs> i'm very excited to see how it comes uh, yeah for sure and, I, and i'm also excited about presenting the the research that we're doing together uh, about the queer experience in the international space sector um at the space right fashion gala uh, where i think it will be a great platform to kind of share uh, what's happening sure and i'm looking forward to collaborating uh, with your team and with the INU team um on these things um since we were meant to have a short interview i will go uh to the last question which is uh oh, yeah uh <laughs> yeah the, the fun question the wild one wild card but um i wanted to ask because obviously i had been thinking about uh, mine as well but uh, <laughs> if you had uh, an outfit id in mind already for the space pride i think that's still to be decided uh, I think I I very much have a signature outfit, which unfortunately I'm not. Uh, I'm wearing one part. Basically, I normally wear a South African bow tie because uh, I'm I'm very proud of of where I'm from. Um, and so I I think I'll definitely you know since I've unfortunately lost that bow tie, um, <laughs> and unfortunately they've discontinued that bow tie, so you can't buy it anywhere. Um, it's going to be an interesting sort of exploration uh, of reconnecting with my my home country um but not only that i'm actually learning to sew uh so we'll see i might sew my own outfit i might not <laughs> i'm not sure how much you can really learn in the span of a year because i'm learning like right from the start <laughs> but i'm excited um i've got you know crazy ideas uh i'll, I'll definitely try and think of something outrageous uh i think it, I can I can promise it will be outrageous that that much. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. <laughs> and, and what about yourself? <laughs> well, I don't know yet. Like maybe it might be electric pop options inspired, but uh, maybe not. I think I always end up uh, maybe going a jetpack. Right, jetpack. I don't know. Uh, I would rather have a, a real one than uh, an imagined <laughs> and crafted one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will give it and some the... thought. So usually I decide on the day actually, so you know. Spontaneous. Spontaneous. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> so But yeah. Very excited of uh for the event and I can't wait for to see everyone's outfits. <laughs> yes, well, for sure. 